British comic book legacies like the Dandy and the Beano have long been the basis for how comics are perceived in Britain. So at the Thought Bubble Convention 2009, we set out to discover, in a time of mass exposure through Hollywood blockbusters, how perceptions of the comic industry and culture have altered. Sort of from the 80s, there was this period where the big three, Mouse, Watchmen, Dark Knight, came out and suddenly comics were legitimate. It's very easy when you're in a convention to believe that everyone's okay with comics and that they're, they've reached maturity and that everyone thinks they're um, you know, uh, just on a par with other art forms. But in the outside world, that is simply not true. Um, you know, there's still a lot of residual prejudice against the comics form. I write a lot for newspapers, and uh, if you, my editors, I, I had one editor in particular, I won't name him, but he said that the paper wasn't going to print anything that was too internet-y or too comic-y, you know, and these, these were the things that he felt shouldn't be given any space. In 2000, this underlying media and public preconception almost led to the demise of comics' most recognised publisher. The industry was in crisis because um, Marvel had just gone bankrupt. Um, and they've recently pulled themselves out of that by making lots of movies, but uh, there was panic in the industry due to that. And also sales were sliding. Uh, what you'd had was um, a boom in graphic novels a little bit before, and then the bubble had burst. And so um, a lot of shops were going under, a lot of publishers were collapsing. Uh, it, it was a crisis, and so all of a sudden people were looking at other ways to make a profit. There's a little more awareness of of, um, of comics because of the comics becoming films thing, which has has uh, has become more and more common in the last couple of decades, the last decade in particular. Whenever a superhero film comes out, the, the sales of the superhero comics spike. They go up like that, but they go down again. You know, immediately afterwards. So Dark Knight up like that. You know, Watchmen up like that, down again. It's it. They these are spikes. They're, they're not doing anything. S sustainable. Further to this, the new American presence in British comic shops had an effect on public perception of readership. This is one of the comics cultures, the UK, that had an absolutely huge girls comics culture at one point. There were over 50 titles for girls and the largest of them circulated a million a week. Now that's not a small culture but that disappeared in the early 80s and that's when the assumption that comics are for boys really started to develop. A recent influx of Japanese comics into Western markets is beginning to encourage a kind of cultural rebirth. Manga have been a surprise hit and they've been selling to sort of teenage girls, which is a market that nobody foresaw. So, I mean, that is an amazing story. What fascinates me is the sort of resurgence of female creators and female representations within comics that's come around, particularly with manga almost means a return to some of the stories from the traditional British girls' comics. Stories like the Four Marys, the friendship group stuff, um, magical fantasy adventures, all of those things are re-emerging. So f for me, it's, it's quite familiar. I, I see um, a cycle rather than it being something that never really existed. The area that has seen the greatest development as a result of the cultural resurgence of the 80s is the study of comics in academia. You would expect there'd be a lot of resistance in academia, people saying you can't study that. It wasn't the case, you know, what Watchmen and uh, Dark Knight Returns and Mouse and everything like that, uh, that whole supposed comics for adults boom, uh, as, as the press portrayed it, uh, made comics very interesting uh, uh, to academics. When I did my PhD in comics, it was all pretty much unheard of. And yet now we're getting to the point where we give an honorary doctorates to people like Brian Tolbert and there's a kind of acknowledgement there, a seriousness that I think has helped develop a kind of healthier cultural approach to comics than has been the case in the past in Britain. What interests me on the academic front is um, meeting an um, increasing number of academics who are either in illustration or in creative writing but also historians, also from media and cultural studies, and also some traditional literature courses. All of these spaces and more are starting to realise they need to teach around graphic novels. This progress in academia has led to some interesting parallels between early attitudes towards comics and those surrounding homosexuality. The same kinds of phrases were used to describe um, the threat of comics as the threat of 
homosexuality. So newspapers would talk about the danger that comics pose to your children. Comics would um, stunt your reading skills um, and homosexuality was seen as a stunting of normal sexual development. Um, in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, lots of different people um, got into this whole thing of having a DIY kind of ethic, making your own comics, making your own zines, making your own culture really, and putting, taking culture away from um, the commercial and putting it back into the hands of ordinary people. Um, one side of that was that a lot of different um, gay, lesbian, bisexual people um, decided to start creating their own zines and their own comics um, and telling their own personal stories. Further studies have even led to the application of comics in some unexpected areas. I'm trying to promote comics amongst medical healthcare professionals as um, a valid um, medium to study, a valid, you know, that we can learn things from comics. One thing that comics do really well is deal with really complex issues because there's so much information packed in to a comics panel and because it's so um, sophisticated and in the, in the way that comics work I think they're, they're ideally suited to, to deal with um, subjects really difficult, uh, difficult or ambiguous subject matter. It's clear to see that the culture around comics has flourished since the 1980s, although this has not been enough to provide the industry sustainable security. So where do comics stand in the ever-changing world of media, and what will the future hold? Comics occupy a place now in the, land, you know, the literary landscape where they didn't before, which is a fantastic achievement. But it's still on a par with, I don't know, maybe cult fiction possibly poetry, you know, you have to see it on that level, as opposed to something that's really huge, like the, the, heart, the hype meisters would, would tell you. There's a lot of argument about whether the print pamphlet comics can survive. Uh, on the one hand, they're being uh, um, taken over by the graphic novels. I think, I think that's the big change, that um, you used to have a mass market in monthly comics, but nowadays, publishers are not bothering to pre-serialise. They're coming out with the graphic novel first and foremost. Traditional books and um, single issues are going to become the new vinyl, where anybody can download a, a pristine track of Lady Gaga, what have you. But if you want a really beautiful feel, a nice product, and something that, that isn't that, you know, isn't that sort of perfectly flawless, you're going to stick with the single issues. Uh, the future holds what it always holds, which is uh, uh, experimentation, great success, dead ends, the ever-present threat of the comic industry disappearing that never really seems to happen. <laughs> you know, it holds all those things. Uh, I think with, uh, with the potential uh, of, of what's been called by, by critics and fierce of, of convergence culture, where all the various pieces of... Uh, technology and entertainment that are all merging together uh, uh, via, via the internet and, and via handheld technology and things like that. Comics will develop along those lines, we're, we're seeing that already. Web comics uh, uh, to, to, your, to your iPhone. Uh, those things will develop and hopefully have a life, but I don't think they'll ever replace, as, as every now and again some journalists has some kind of terror piece in the news saying you know, comics are are coming to an end, as if the general public out there really care. But, you know, it's, uh, it, I don't think that'll ever happen. I don't think that comics will ever be replaced fully. And, and I think uh, uh, what we will continue to have is hopefully ongoing uh, cross-pollination of, of ideas and uh, all, for, all for the better.